to post the story in the description below the video, but the story is too long for YouTube. So, um, hello. I will, um, try to, when I post the story, I'll try to post a link that'll lead to the story so people can read because it's a little long. Um, so I just want to make sure everybody can watch and follow later. Hi, Mimi. Oh, you're so cute. You are so cute. Yes, you are. You're adorable. So let me just make sure that you guys can see everything. We have no pictures, so it's just going to be story. Hi, maybe come on. All right. So the, <laughs> there are a few words that are going to be hard for me to read <laughs> or say. So bear with me. I think that's another reason why I want to post the story somewhere. <laughs> so you guys, if I confuse you, you can read the story. You want to go in your chair? Yes. What are you doing? Okay. I got the story up. Okay, I think I'm ready. Hopefully you're ready. Here we go. Are you ready? The story is Coral and Nala's Gigantolossal Adventure. Let's try that again. Coral and Nala's Gigantolossal Adventure by Jersey Cat. One morning, bored with her packing paper and looking for something else to play with, Nala crawled under the bureau and discovered a hole in the wall, apparently made by the gardeners the day before. She called to Coral to come look, and together they crawled through the hole and out onto the grounds of the castle. We should go back inside, said Nala. Yes, we definitely should. In a minute, replied Coral, troublemaker. They walked around exploring the world they had only seen out the window, sniffing the sniffs and enjoying the tickly feeling of grass under their paws. Then just as they were heading back to the hole in the castle wall, they saw a butterfly fluttering alluringly and decided to chase after it. The butterfly flew across the castle grounds toward the street with the girls in pursuit. It flew through the open doors of a bus stopped in front of the castle. Without really thinking it through, Coral and Nala followed the butterfly onto the bus, the doors closing behind them. Trapped, the girls hid under a seat. From where they hid, they could see the butterfly perched on the bus driver's cap. They huddled together, wishing they had never left the cuddle room. After quite some time, the bus came to a stop and the butterfly flew off. Not knowing what else to do, the girls decided to keep following it. Once off the bus, they found themselves surrounded by huge buildings and hundreds of people all rushing around them, threatening to trample them. Since the butterfly had disappeared, Coral and Nala slunk along the side of one of the big buildings, trying to find a place to hide until they could figure out what to do next. Suddenly, a man ran up to them saying, what are you doing out here, kitties? They're waiting for you on set. He picked them up, tucking one kitten under each arm. Where's your trainer? She'll never work in this town again. Coral and Nala looked at each other and shrugged. The man carried the girls into one of the huge buildings and to a table where a woman stood, stood waiting. Cats, finally, put them down here, she said to the man, then looked closely at Coral and Nala. Are these the same cats that we used last time? Hmm, they must have had some work done. I'll have them ready in 20 minutes. Coral and Nala were brushed from their noses to the tips of their tails, then sprayed with a fur gloss. 
They had their canines whitened and their claws polished. Lastly, jeweled collars were placed around their necks. What are you doing? Thus appropriately made up and costumed, Coral and Nala were carried to another part of the huge building, where they were placed in a fancy faux fur cat bed sitting on a plush chair in front of a green screen. Soon there were about a dozen people in strange clothes all around them. Some of them moved around and some of them stayed in one place. Most of them said odd things. A lady dressed all in black and white, Nala thought she looked beautiful, shouted up at something the girls couldn't see. Over and over again, the strangely dressed people would say the same odd things and move around in the same way, and the lady in black and white would shout up at, the, at nothing. Then someone would yell that he had cut himself, and a few minutes later he'd yell, Fraction! And it would all happen again. I think that's supposed to be action. Is it fraction? I don't know. The girls found it very interesting but confusing. The best part was that whenever the man cut himself, the makeup lady would bring them dishes of food. They didn't know it, but they were eating a lobster. This is delicious, said Coral, but I just know I'm going to pay for it later. Stinky poop, right? Me too, replied Nala. I feel like my tiara is falling off. When the man had cut himself for the last time and said something about wrapping paper, the strangely dressed people all walked away. Coral and Nala were picked up by the makeup lady and taken back to her table, where their jeweled collars were removed and the fur gloss was wiped off. All done, said the lady. Now let's put you in your carriers and get you back to your trainer, if I can find her. Deciding they definitely did not want to go into carriers, Coral and Nala jumped down from the table and made a run for it. They dashed through the first open door they saw and found themselves back in the middle of the chaos outside the big buildings. They dodged speeding golf carts and harried personal assistants, juggling phones and packages, and their bosses dry cleaning and half double decaffeinated half caps with twists of lemon and quarter sprinkles of nutmeg on lightly steamed low fat alpaca milk. Much to their surprise, the girls saw the butterfly again. They followed it as, followed it at it as I said all of that before that, and now I'm messing up. They followed it as it flew back onto a bus. Coral and Nala once again hid under a seat. We were here before. I can smell us, said Coral. At the same time the bus was pulling away from the curb, a woman holding two carriers was running onto the soundstage shouting, Sorry we're late! Traffic is horrendous and my phone died! I've got the cats and they're hungry. Do you have their lobster? Oh, are we too late? She never worked in that town again. Coral and Nala rode the bus until they saw the butterfly fly out the open doors again. Once more, and for the last time, they followed the butterfly out the door and across the grounds of the Princess Sarah's castle. Of the grounds of Princess Sarah's castle, when they reached the hole in the wall, which would be surreptitiously repaired by the gardeners the very next day, with Sarah none the wiser, they climbed through and back into their room. When they emerged from under the bureau, both kids made a run for the litter box. I knew this was going to happen, said Coral. Me too, said Nala. Just then, Princess Sarah opened the door to the cuddle room to find both kittens in the litter box. Synchronized pooping now, she laughed, then gagged. Ew, that's the stinkiest poop ever, she said, staggering back out the door. <laughs> Later, after they cleaned their butts, Coral and Nala curled up together on the seafoam-colored blanket and fell into a deep sleep. They had had quite an adventure that day. Epilogue. Summer 2019. Princess Sarah and Aunt Dee Denise decide to go see the big summer blockbuster that everyone's raving about. The Defenderators. The latest film from Gigantolossal Studios, featuring characters from the Gigantolossal Comics universe. Kitten O'Clock, with her ability to turn back time. Ghosty Cat, with her power to morph into a feline wraith. Dirk, the Bee Master, and many more, including Manny Moore, Veritonium's sidekick. 
About an hour into the film, there's a scene set in Lizzie the Lynx's lair where the superheroes have taken refuge, refuge while they devise a plan to defeat the mutant drop bears that are wreaking havoc on the planet. Darm Nation proposes sending a strongly worded email, while Meta Luna Squire argues that a cease and desist letter would be more effective. Piano Gale, dressed in her signature black and white costume, shouts up at the CGI rendered kibble. CGI, yes, who towers 30 feet of, over the others. Hey, you big lummox, 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 watch where you put your feet. You almost stepped on me. Suddenly, Princess Sarah and Auntie Denise both gasp and lean, <laughs> lean forward in their seats, as if leaning forward in a movie theater would actually help you get a closer look at what's on the screen. There, sitting on a fancy cat bed, Jeweled collars on their necks are a black and white cow kitty and a gray and white tuxi watching the action around them with interest. Is that? whispers Denise. It can't be. How could it? replies Sarah. They only half watch the rest of the film. So distracted are they by the sight of the cats bearing such an uncanny resemblance to former Foster's Coral and Nala. Meanwhile, Coral and Nala, having long since taken up residence in their forever home, Occasionally reminisce about that day. Remember that time we, one will begin, chase that darn butterfly? The other replies, yeah, stinkiest poop ever. The end. That was crazy. You were crazy. You were crazy too. Stinkiest poop ever. So, do you see why I need to post the story? There was a lot in there. And there were some really fun mentions of some of our regular chatters. So, I will post that story somehow. Maybe I'll do a Google link. Um, unless I can figure out a way to post it when I post the clip. We'll see. So thank you for coming and watching Storytime. I will um, post the video shortly. Right? That was, that was a stressful story. I just pictured you guys out in the world doing my little heart pound.